Hey there, folks. Another episode of Random Road Cuts here on US Highway 89 at the bottom of Oak Creek, Oak Creek Canyon, just outside the town of Sedona. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey, and thanks for joining me. On our episode here today, Random Road Cuts, what we do is we stop at a road cut, check it out, go through observations systematically, and then hopefully come up with a viable geologic interpretation for what exactly has happened here. So let's go ahead across the road when there's a gap in the cars and let's check out this road cut. So the first thing we can see here is the obvious layering in these red rocks. Of course, knowing where you are and some of the, the background helps a little bit. We can see off in the distance there as the sun's rising. Some of the other colorful units here around Sedona um, dominated by sedimentary rocks. So that's probably what we'd expect here. But there are some volcanic rocks as well, and there's more than one unit in the sedimentary rocks. So let's go ahead and head across here and start working our way through this outcrop. I think we'll work our way to the left. So there's a bit of a parking area there and sort of get a little bit more off the road if we can. So here towards the bottom, we have a maybe meter thick from the road level up kind of massive unit. Grain size is kind of fine sand, I'd say. So this is looking a lot like a fine grain sandstone. Things we look for in sandstones might be cross bedding, big angles cutting through the rock that might tell us a clue about its origin. I'm not seeing that here, just sort of a massive sandstone. And then we get into a bit more of a kind of a modeled unit here, fine grain, but other chunks of material. And then that grades upwards into a fine bedded or fine grained, or at least it looks fine grained and thinly bedded um, unit there, probably mudstone, but we'll need to check that. Then another thick bed, possibly sandstone, another thin bed, and then a thicker one above. So whatever was depositing these sediments, there was some fluctuations in the energy and the depositional environment. Uh, this unit here sitting above our massive sandstone is a little different, kind of gray. It's a little bit harder than the sandstone, which is softer. Um, and let's go ahead and test that because that may very well be um, limestone. Let's go ahead and check and see what happens here. Yeah, so we get a, uh, well, there we go, a nice positive reaction with the acid. So that lets us know we have calcium carbonate. So we have a little thin lens of limestone here. And most limestones are deposited in marine settings. So likely have a situation here where we're in a sort of coastal environment when these rocks were deposited. Sometime we're depositing sand, maybe more beach environment, maybe slight rises in sea level deposit this limestone um, at periods of time. So just maybe fluctuations in sea level might account for some of the different layers that we see here. Not seeing any obvious fossils in the rock here. Keep looking though. Down a little further. It's getting a little more busy here. I tried to come out early before all the traffic was here, but it may not be the case. More of the limestone here. Again, not seeing any obvious fossils in there. You might expect to see little things like donut shapes that are crinoids, maybe bits of clams or brachiopods. And because this is horizontally bedded and it's a little bit of a steep slope, I don't think we can, or at least right here, get up to the upper units. But let's head down this way uh, I think we'll have a better chance of exploring some of these units above. This lower sandstone is definitely, you know, a, a nice bench here, very consistent across the bottom. Um, looks like it gets a little bit thicker here though. So it's almost like maybe, uh, notice as this, we go from this lower sandstone, the contact kind of rides up a little bit. So, and then down here, the sandstone is a little bit thicker than it was over here. So this may be a bit of a channel, like a cut that's been cut down into this sandstone. And then these rocks have been deposited down here. 
Might be getting some, um, you can see some fragments in the sandstone now, but they're sort of the same color and more or less the same type of material. These are what we sometimes call rip-up class. Basically, you've deposited the material, but then some erosional event, er, uh, excuse me, while you're depositing the material, you're ripping up some of the material and depositing it with the sediment, and you end up with these particles in here called uh, rip-up class. And that might be what we're seeing in here with some of these. And that's different than what we saw further down this way when the sandstone was a bit more massive. I don't think there's a fault there, but some sort of change in the characteristic uh, in this little zone here. More of these rip-up clasts, mostly, yeah, mud or fine sandstone, I'd say. Notice there's no other um, rock types in here yet. Like we might expect to see in a conglomerate, you'd have like chunks of other things in there. But right now we're not seeing that, just mainly these, these rip-up clasts. Although here we're seeing something a little different. Here's some of the gray rock um, that's in there. And that might be what we saw with the rip-up clasts. Maybe they were just coated with a little bit of mud. Let's see, these could be limestone as well. Let's see what these do with the acid. Yeah, so we get a reaction there as well. So these are little chunks of limestone um, that have been incorporated here. So we're definitely looking at a higher energy event that's depositing these, oh, maybe about golf ball size at the, at the greatest class. So our, our, our unit here has transitioned from more of a fine sandstone down there at the far end of the outcrop. And now it's more of a uh, conglomerate. We're seeing more large particles here. And this is something you might see in a stream setting where you've got the channel of the stream, which is depositing the larger material. But then as you move laterally towards the shore, away from the deep water and the, and the, and the fast moving current, you might see more uh, sandy material, the more fine grain material that's deposited where it's moving a little bit more slowly. Odd, that's an odd shaped chunk there, but that looks like more of the, the limestone as well. And then now the road cuts presenting itself such that we can get into uh, the unit above a little bit more. So let's keep working our way down and a little bit more off the road would be nice too. Yeah, some of these interesting larger chunks of limestone. Let's go ahead and test those again real quick, but I can see some of the calcite um, crystallization in that little open space there. So that should, yeah, that stuff fizzes like crazy. And so uh, definitely some particles of limestone embedded in this sandy conglomerate, I guess. Mostly sand. What's interesting about some of the clasts is the shapes are not, I mean, there's a lot of uh, size di distribution as well. There's big chunks like this, very small particles. Uh, but the shapes of the material are quite angular in places. In places, they are a little bit more rounded. So it's a bit of a hodgepodge mixture of class sizes and shapes in this unit. And it's mostly the sand, right? Like most of it is dominated by the what we call the matrix, the, the, the fine grain material. And then you just get these larger particles just sort of floating around in there. Okay, just kind of working our way through this. But interesting, it transitioned from such a uniform fine sand at the other end of the outcrop. Now we're seeing you know, almost like softball size particles in the rock right here. And again, the limestone unit tends to be the dominant class type in here. Interesting, yeah, so maybe some sort of stream environment. Um, some of the limestones in there look like they have a little bit of chert maybe in them as well. Got to work past the bush here. And then we get to a spot over here where uh, it opens up in the parking lot. So it allows us a little better access to the outcrop. It's transitioning from a road cut to an outcrop. Um, yeah, same unit here. Yeah, some of this limestone looks a little bit cherty to me. So it's a little bit more resistant. And 
you can get those chirp particles traveling down a stream system and they might stay angular for quite a while because they're quite resistant and hard. Um, so let's move on up here is an interesting contact. Um, so we've got the same unit we've been looking at here. What looks to be a more fine grained unit just above, although it also has some of these large, somewhat rounded chunks in it too. It's just a little bit more evenly bedded. It's still about the same grain size, but then there's like kind of a sharp contact right here along this margin. And you can trace that down right under here. And then we have this much more massive unit sitting up above this gray unit here, which does look a lot more uh, like a limestone. But then, then again, it has particles in it too. It looks like it has some clasts in it as well. So interesting. This is a bit of a head scratcher. Um, let's go ahead and test this stuff though and see what it looks like. That could be just sand, but okay, so we're not getting much of a reaction here. Interesting. So not as much cal uh, calcite in this unit above. This looks to be a little bit more like a, a sandy conglomerate perhaps. Uh, but the contact here doesn't look, it looks erosional to me, the way this cuts down steeply and then kind of comes down this way. It doesn't look like a fault because it doesn't cut straight down and, and cut through the unit below. It should cut both of them if it was a true fault. So this looks a little bit more like an erosional and then depositional contact. This unit has been deposited up against this one here. Um, it's a little bit tricky and then as we come along this way we can see it's still quite irregular kind of coming down about to here and then working its way back up yeah kind of odd uh, it even gives this a unit above a bit of a, a dip or tilt here perhaps and then we're back to then we kind of lose it here it's almost like this material's just been might be a buttress unconformity where this material has just been plastered up against um, this erosional cut here. Pretty interesting. So, gosh, more questions uh, posed than answered. Here's a section of the, our lower unit that quite nicely shows some of these clasts. Um, and here they look a little different. They don't look like the limestone as much as in other places. So yeah, I might have to do a little reading and see if there's been any uh, work published there. Oh, it is fizzing a little bit. It's just so red that it looked a little bit different, but it is the same, well, potentially the same limestone. Might be just coated in red too. A lot of times what you can have up here is um, the more muddy units above as they weather and the rain runs off, it can actually coat the surface of those underlying rocks. But you can see a lot of the clasts and chunks in this, it's a true conglomerate now, but now the, the chunks or the class are dominant, what we would call class supported. Whereas around the corner, there was just the class were few and far between. And then we eventually had the sandstone with no larger gravels or class in there. Um, so a pretty interesting relationship just looking at this unit and working laterally. You can see quite a bit of differences there. So this is why the random road cuts thing is such a cool idea is, you know, driving by this, I was kind of like, eh. It's all horizontal. It kind of looks the same from the car. Uh, I wasn't expecting much diversity, um, but there was quite a bit. I mean, and look at the size of this class here. This one's, you know, about hand size. So a lot more energy moving the particles here um, at this point in the channel or whatever the depositional environment was. Mostly pretty rounded, but again, some of them tending to be a little bit angular in shape, but they're all just kind of jammed together. So pretty, pretty cool. So if I had to guess, I think it's probably part of the Supai group, um, sort of where we are stratigraphically, you know, looking up into the distance there, we can see the white unit up on the rim. And then you can see these more orange rocks here in the middle ground. 
Um, I know what units those are. That's the Coconino sandstone up high, the white unit. These orange rocks in the middle ground are the Schneebly Hill Formation. Uh, and then we should have the Hermit Formation below that, uh, which is probably forming the slopes at the base of that hill. And then, so this is most likely parts of the Supai group. But the Supai group has a lot of different rock types in it, limestones, sandstones, conglomerates, um, which all jive with what we've seen here as well. So pretty fun stuff here. Uh, hope you enjoyed this episode of Random Road Cuts. Always a pleasure to just kind of get out of the car and learn and explore with you. Uh, yeah, that is an interesting relationship there. The way that cuts down through the rocks this way. But we'll go ahead and sign off from this exceptional road cut next to the Midgley Bridge area here in Sedona, Arizona. <laughs>